Hello, my name is Paul Roberts. I'm from Tuscany Networks and I'm here to give you a demonstration of our contingency switcher product which runs on Vital QIP. Now we do, an, do have another version which runs on Infoblox, but they are two separate products at the moment, although we are hoping to merge them at some point in the future. Now a couple of the things that this version does that the Infoblox version doesn't do is um, it can schedule DNS changes to occur at some point in the future. So you can schedule a change to happen, say, at 10 o'clock on Saturday night without you actually having to be present. Um, and the other thing it will do is it will also do some lookups to DNS to check that when it does the switch that the um, DNS is correctly updated. Um, but apart from that, the functionality is very similar. So the idea is that you can automate the switching of DNS records when you're trying to switch services from one data center to another. So for instance, if you've got a live data center and a contingent data center and you want to switch a number of services from the live server from the live data center to the contingent data center, then you can do it using this product rather than actually having to manually hand edit all the DNS records or even without having to go into QIP and start editing objects or aliases or whichever mechanism you use. <clears throat> so let's uh, let's just log in. I'm going to use the um, QIP credentials. It does actually use the QIP um, authentication to authenticate users. So I'm logging in as QIP man, which is basically the super user. And what we see are a list of services that have already been defined. <clears throat> and we've got a hierarchy on the left hand side here. So we can group services. So here we're using uh, geographic hierarchy. So if we expand uh, NYC, which is obviously New York City and the US, and there's a service here called Web Farm. So if I just look at this service, we can see how it's set up. So we give it a friendly name. Uh, we've also got an FQDN. So this is the name that the, uh, the users are actually going to look up uh, in order to get resolution. And then we've got various different modes. So we can see here we've got four modes configured, live, backup, pre-prod, and UAT. And each one of these modes uses a different type of um, storage method. Now there's different methods. Uh, basically the idea is that we can use uh, an object within QIP and point it to a particular IP address. And what that will do is we'll create an A record in DNS. So if we switch this service into backup mode, for instance, what the system will do is it will modify the object um, on 192.168.2.10 and it will actually change it to use this FQDN. So the object itself, the object name will change, which will cause a corresponding change to the A record. And any previous um, mode that was currently being used will get renamed. So you'll actually see um, the A record change. <clears throat> but there are other ways of doing this. We've had customers that, what, that store their records differently in QIP. So for instance, the other thing we can do is we can create resource records and attach those to objects. So this is another way of storing um, DNS records within QIP. Um, now that does actually requ require a DNS generation. Uh, now if we use the hostname method, dynamic DNS is used with QIP to cause those updates to occur in real time. But when you're using resource record, the resource record function in QIP, um, it's not dynamic, so you have to actually do a DNS generation. So the product can do that as well, actually, actually perform the DNS generation after the changes occurs. And the other thing we can do is also use aliases, uh, which create CNAME records in DNS. So that means then what you can have is the objects themselves will actually have the real host name of the device and the alias would actually contain the FQDN uh, or the, the service name if you like. So let's do an example switch and then we can see what's happening if we use this, uh, this particular service. <clears throat> so we can see it listed here in the GUI. It's currently running in pre-prod mode. So if we just get a DOS prompt up and do NSLOOKUP and the FQDN is www.test.com. Okay, so we can currently see that the record is pointing to 192.168.3.10, which is in pre-prod mode. So if I just highlight the service and then do switch, now this is a little, also a little bit different to the Infoblox version. Uh, the system asks us to fill in more information, so it's more it's more about kind of workflow really. So what we can do is uh, let's say switch www service to live. So we've got a description. Uh, it's also asking us for a change number. So most organizations use change requests to perform these changes. So we'll just put in uh, some random numbers. Okay. Uh, we've got various other options that we can select here and we can also perform um, a schedule. Uh, 
you know, actually schedule the change to occur and also fill in the comment. Uh, we can also get the system to send us an email alert when the uh, switch actually occurs and we can also specify the mode. So we're only switching one service here so we'll just specify that we're going to switch it into live mode. Now we had more than one service we could specify them individually here in this list which is similar to the way the Infoblox version of Contingency Switcher works as well. So let's actually switch that now. We'll say yes and what happens is the switch will get submitted to a queue so it says request 68 so it's all occurring asynchronously. So we look at the request queue click on all requests. You can see it's currently running at the top there. Request number 68. Right, and then we can see it's finished. So I can highlight that and do show details. And we can see it actually only took nine seconds to complete. And then you've got all the information down the bottom there. <clears throat> Tells you when it actually occurred. And also this little thumbs up here means that it did a DNS check so it did the switch, it did the DNS check and then you get the little green thumbs up icon. Um, now if there was a DNS error um, you would get a red icon with a thumbs down and you can see previously there were some errors here where um, the DNS wasn't configured correctly. So if we just get our DOS prompt up now, now remember when you're using um, when you're renaming hostname objects uh, dynamic updates occur with QIP so it all happens in real time and we can see straight away that the DNS record has changed to 1.10 instead of 3.10. So you can imagine if you've got a large number of services that need switching, this tool would automate um, all those switches and take a lot of the hard work out and also eliminate any introduced errors. So for instance, if you're trying to do this manually um, and typing all these entries in, even through QIP, you can make quite a lot of mistakes, um, you know, typos and things, which can cause all sorts of problems. So let's actually try and add a new service and then I can demonstrate things like the um, the alias function. Now aliases um, obviously require an object to exist already. <clears throat> so if we have a look, I've got a, uh, another server here called FTP-Live. So there's an object called FTP-Live. If we look on this subnet, we've got an object called FTP-Backup. And then on this one, we've got FTP-PPD. So let's expand our hierarchy. Uh, let's say I want to create a, a new part of the hierarchy. This is also a little bit different to the Infoblox tool. Instead of using um, forward slashes to delineate the, the tree, we can actually add groups and subgroups. So I'm just going to add a group and let's call it um, Washington, Washington DC, for instance. And then if I expand this, you see I get a new group with nothing in it. Right click and do add service. OK, so this is going to be our FTP service, so I'll call it ftp.test.com. That's the FQ... Uh, whoops, sorry, I've got that wrong. <laughs> FTP service, and the FQDN is ftp.test.com. <coughs> uh, now, so for the live mode, we're going. this time we're going to use an object alias, and the target is going to be ftp-live.test.com. ftp-backup.test.com which is object alias and for this one it's going to be ftp-ppd.test.com and I'm going to leave the UAT blank let's say I don't actually want a UAT record so I can just leave that one blank okay so you can see the service has now been defined let's just go to DNS and make sure that it's not resolvable test.com OK, but what you will see is, for instance, ftp.live.test.com. That's the A record <coughs> that's been defined. So let's just switch that one into live mode. It's not currently running at the moment. So I'll say switch FTP service to live. Change, change number, I'll just put something in there. And then let's, let's specify live as the mode. Switch now. Yes. Okay, request ID 71. So let's look at the requests. Okay, so it's running at the moment. Let's give it a few seconds. Uh, 
There we go, now it's completed. Show details. Took eight seconds to run and complete it successfully. Now again, using aliases through QIP is all dynamic. So if I look up ftp.test.com, there we go, we can see we now have an alias ftp.test.com pointing to ftp-live. So we've got um, our www service using A records and our FTP service using an alias. Now I can switch both services uh, together, so I can just highlight both of them we see they're both running in live mode. So let's, for instance, switch them into backup mode. So let's say we want to fail them over to our contingents data center. Switch to backup mode. And you can see now, you, because I'm selecting more than one service, I get the option to switch services individually if I want to. Now, but I'm going to specify the common mode, so I'm going to switch all of them into backup mode. Switch now. We just check QIP. My backup subnet is dot two. So when I start, when I resolve www and FTP, they should ultimately resolve to an address on the dot two subnet. Okay, looks like my event log's full on this system. No problem. Let's just check the requests. Okay, you can see it's completed. So now if we look up, just move the window up slightly. We look up ftp.test.com. Now if you look previously, it was resolving to .1.15. Now it resolves to .2.15. And if I look up dub dub dub, that should also resolve to an address on the .2 subnet which it does. So both services have now been switched into backup mode. <clears throat> now, if I wanted to, I can also um, use resource record definitions. So let's say we want to add a new service, but this time we're going to use um, resource records and let's say we're going to use um, a TFTP service this time. TFTP.test.com Let's use resource records this time and for the target use 1.68.1.15 Let's just check QIP. Okay, yeah. Just wanted to make sure I had the right IP address. Okay, so now we've got a TFTP service. And let's switch this one. Switch to live. So what this is going to do now is it's going to create um, a resource record on the object using the resource records tab. But because that's not dynamic, uh, it, it, the system's prompting us now that we should really be doing a DNS generation. Uh, and it's detected that I've not set the DNS generation option. So I'll click no and then go back to here and then select this option here. And what the system will do is it will perform a DNS generation after the switch. Okay, so we've got request 74 now. Okay, so you can see it's running. Now this might take a little bit longer to complete because it has to do the DNS gen. But what we should hopefully see, if I go into QIP now and look at the, the live object, uh, 1.15, go to resource records, and there we go, we can see there's the resource record that's been added to the object. So it's going to create another A record but attached to the FTP-Live server object. So it means there'll just be additional A records rather than using aliases. So you can see the system's quite flexible, gives you various different ways of managing records. 
and indeed there we go we can see it's completed so if we look up tftp.test.com you can see it comes back straight away with a with an A record so we've been looking at services and requests here we've also got auditing so all the changes that people have been doing um, and all the service switches get audited and you can see which user actually um, performed the change you can see here for, for instance that there's a master zone regeneration being performed that's the DNS generation that's occurring and we've also got various settings that we can define so we can define the, um, the users that are able to log into contingency switcher which are based on QIP administrators uh, the roles also allow you to specify um, also allow you to specify the access rights that each user has so you can you can even narrow down individual groups or um, individual records that people can access and perform changes and the global settings basically allows you to specify things like the QIP username and password that the system logs in as um, and also things like the IP address of the email server and the from and to address and also SNMP for generating traps um, and that's pretty much it so thanks very much for watching this uh, if you've got any questions feel free to drop me an email my email address is paul.roberts at tuscanynetworks.com or if you want more product related information you can visit our website at www.tuscanynetworks.com well, you should hopefully find more information and data sheets and also a copy of this video. Thanks very much for watching.